So we are reading from the Bhagavad Gita as it is, 14th chapter, 26, text number 26. So very famous verse, <coughs> we'll chant together. Mam chayo vyabhichadena Bhakti yoga na sevate Sagunan samatityaitan Brahma buyaya kalpate Mam unto me Cha also Ya a person who of Yabhicharena without fail Bhakti Yogena by devotional service Sevate render service Sa He Gunan the modes of material nature Samatitya transcending Etan all these, Brahma Bhuyaya, elevated to the Brahman platform, Kalpate becomes translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Silesi Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada ki. <laughs> translation One who engages in full devotional service, unfailing in all circumstances at once transcends the modes of material nature and thus comes to the level of Brahman. Purport. This verse is a reply to Arjun's, Arjun's third question. What is the means of attaining to the transcendental position? As explained before, the material world is acting under the spell of the modes of material nature. One should not be disturbed by the activities of the modes of, of nature. Instead, of putting his consciousness into such activities, he may transfer his consciousness to Krishna activities. Krishna activities are known as Bhakti Yoga, all these acting for Krishna. This includes not only Krishna but his different planetary expansions such as Ram and Narayan. He has innumerable expansions. One who is engaged in the service of any of the forms of Krishna or of his plenary expansions is considered to be transcendently situated. One should also note that all the forms of Krishna are fully transcendental, blissful, full of knowledge and internal. Such personalities of Godhead are omnipotent and omniscient. And he possess all transcendental qualities. So if one engages himself in the service of Krishna, or his plenary expansions with unfailing determination. Although these modes of material nature are very difficult to overcome, one can overcome them easily. This has already been explained in the seventh chapter. One who surrenders unto Krishna at once surmounts the influence of the modes of material nature. To be in Krishna consciousness or in devotional service means to acquire equality with Krishna. The Lord says that His nature is eternal, blissful and full of knowledge. And the living entities are part and parcels of the Supreme as gold particles are part of a gold mine. Thus a living entity in the spiritual position is as good as gold, as good as Krishna in quality. The difference of individuality continues, otherwise there will be no question of Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga means that the Lord is there, the devotee is there and the activity of exchange of love between the Lord and the devotee is there. Therefore the individuality of two persons is present in the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the individual person, otherwise there will be no meaning to Bhakti Yoga. 
If one is not situated in the same transcendental position with the Lord, one cannot serve the Supreme Lord. To be a personal assistant to a king, one must acquire the qualification. Thus the qualification is to become Brahman, or freed from all material contamination. It is said in the Vedic literature, Brahman evil san Brahma pieti. One can attain the Supreme Brahman by becoming Brahman. This means that one must qualitatively become one with Brahman. By attainment of Brahman, one does not lose its eternal Brahman identity as an individual soul. Om Agyanati Mirandasya Agyanandana Salakaya Chaksurun Maritam Yanam Dasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stabritam Yena Bhutale Sayam Rupakadama Yam Dadati Sabadantikam Bandeham Sri Guru Sri Yotapadakamalan Sri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganatan Vitantam Sajivam Sadetam Savadutam Parjana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Siradha Krishna Padam Sagana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vidamsha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabando Jagat Pate Gope Shagobika Ganta Radha Kanta Namastade Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshari Prishabhanu Sude Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Banchakalpa Trubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyahevacha Paditanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nittananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Zari Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Maam Chayo Vyavicharina Bhakti Yoga Nisivate Sagunan Samitittaya Brahma Bhuyaya Kalpate One who engages in full devotional service, unfailing in all circumstances, at one transcends the modes of material nature and thus comes to the level of Brahman. <coughs> so, here Krishna is speaking to Arjuna and ultimately for the benefit of all conditioned souls about the situation of the Supreme Lord about devotional service about the devotee Krishna has explained in the purple by Srila Prabhupada is always transcendently situated beyond the modes of material nature Krishna is eternal full of bliss and knowledge. Vigraha. He has a very beautiful enchanting form, transcendental form. And the, as Prabhupada is explaining, there are many personalities of Godhead. But as mentioned even by Krishna himself, Aham Sarvasya Prabhu Mata Savam Pavatate, that everything is emanating from me, all spiritual material worlds. And as in the Bhagavatam, he takes some Sakalapum, some Krishna's to Bhagavan Sayam. The many personalities of Godhead, but Krishna is Sai Bhagavan, Adipurush, the original person. As in the Brahma Samhita, as it is explained, Ishwara Parama Krishna, Satchadananda Vigrana, Dira Dira Govinda, Sarva Karana Karana. And Lord Brahma is. Glorifying Krishna and always saying Govinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. I worship Govinda, uh, the original person. All the other personalities of God are the expansions of Krishna. So Krishna is always performing his wonderful pastimes in Golok Vrindavan. 
with his eternal associates and the goal actually is to join him in these wonderful pastimes uh, so but now the conditioned soul in this material world has to become free from the modes of material nature by engaging in devotional activities and uh, so it is clearly mentioned hmm. so there's the supreme mode is transcendental and then mamevam sajiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana the living entities are part and parcels of krishna they are also ultimately transcendental eternal full of bliss and knowledge in a personal form jivere sopa krishnera nitadas but there's a difference between the Lord and the Jiva, the living entity. The Lord is omnipotent and is all pervading. His Vibhu is great, and the living entities are Anu, they are infinitesimal, but they have the same quality. <clears throat> so, in order to approach Krishna, to approach the Supreme Lord, one has to be transcendently situated and one has to engage in devotional activities <coughs> as Prabhupada in the purport is mentioning also several times that uh, two persons are there the supreme and in the, in the, in the individual because many persons they will say that the absolute truth is one and the jivas the living entities they will merge in the absolute truth and then there's no individuality but that is not the correct understanding ultimately we are one or we belong to the absolute truth and uh, in one sense we can say uh, just like uh, the example may be given of the birds in the tree so the tree is there and then the one bird may fly into the tree so then one may say oh he has become one with the tree so from one point of view we can say yeah it is all right yeah now it is uh, the bird is inside the tree and almost becoming one but still the individuality is there so when we enter the spiritual kingdom so then we acquire we have the same quality brahman the supreme brahman is there and we as individual we also brahman but the individuality is not lost always we were part and parcels of krishna and we will always remain And actually by engaging in devotional service, one is then properly situated on the transcendental platform and then one can realize one's spiritual nature and the spiritual uh, position of the Lord of devotional service and one can see the beautiful form of Krishna and then uh, have a wonderful exchange with Krishna. So it is mentioned that um, one must be situated on the platform of Brahman, then only one can serve the Lord. And even we can see in deity worship, those who are engaged in deity worship, there has to be some qualification, and proper is writing also, qualification is required. Giving the example of uh, the attendant of the king, or the servant of the king, in order to be able to serve the king, one should be qualified. Some qualification must be there or servant of the prime minister or president of a, of a country. One must be qualified. Similarly, in order to serve the Lord, one must become qualified. <clears throat> so even in, in the temple, the deities are there. And then who is able to serve the deities? Qualification has to be there. One must be initiated by a bona fide spiritual master. One has to chant 16 rounds every day, one has to study the scriptures. 
and ultimately one must get the Brahman initiation and chant the Gayatri mantras. Then we may be qualified to go on the altar and serve the Lord. But even for that, one has to learn the process of how to worship the deities. And even there, there is a process of purification. Chanting Achman for purification, chanting various mantras, so that one may become transcendently situated. There is one mantra known as Bhuta Shuddhi, the purification of the material elements, of the gross body and the subtle body, so that we become transcendental in our understanding, <coughs> in our existence, and then we can serve the Lord. Because as mentioned, one must be on the platform of Brahman in order to serve the Lord. So, so deity worship, one will say the different mantras. Uh, so, in simple worship, one will say one mantra, Om Tad Vishnu Paramambaram Zada Pashanti Isariya Om Divya Chakso Radadam Dattvi Pazi Vindavu Jagribam Sajanindare Vishnu Dhyat Paramampadam So, the, the Supreme Lord is transcendently situated. The Brahmanas, by transcendent vision, they cannot perceive the Supreme Lord. And then Buddha should is there and by nature the term servant of Krishna, but by misfortune due to my being inimical towards him since I am moyal, have been identifying with this material body and have been wandering in the cycle of birth and death. Now by the order of my spiritual master, I know that I am an infinitesimal spiritual being completely apart from the gross and subtle body. Now by the order of my spiritual master, I have obtained the good fortune of being able to serve his lotus feet as well as the lotus feet of Gonita, Krishna Brahma, Sisi, Radha, Shama, Sundara. So one must have the proper consciousness, be aware that we are not this body but spirit soul, and then one can actually engage in the service of the Lord. <coughs> so that is the process. So for that purpose also we must have a strong sadhana of chanting our rounds nicely, of studying in the association of the devotees trying to control the mind and the senses throughout the day. <coughs> and then in this way we will be qualified to worship the Lord in the temple and ultimately to perceive the Supreme Lord as He is. And then even with one's consciousness, engage in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. And then ultimately by becoming perfect, then after giving up this body, we may be able to enter the pastimes of the Lord in one of the universes. So one point also which is mentioned here, which is important. Avyabicharena, without fail. So one has to be engaged in devotional service, bhakti, yoga, and sevate. Without fail means all the time. As in the ninth chapter also Krishna is saying, ananya chintan tamam yajana paya pasate. So by being constantly engaged in devotional service, then Krishna will help us. So various verses are there explaining that one must be constantly engaged in devotional service. <coughs> so that, uh, that is an important point. Not that sometimes we engage in devotional service and then again we engage in science gratification. Then we will not be able to transcend the three modes of material nature and be completely absorbed in the transcendental loving exchange with Krishna. So, bhakti yoga, bhakti yogena. So, yogena means the link with the Supreme Lord. To connect with the Lord. Bhakti with, uh, with, uh, with love and affection. And Prabhupada is explaining, so bhakti yoga, that implies that the two persons are there. The Supreme Lord and the individual soul the devotee and then we can speak of bhakti yoga <coughs> so again and again Prabhupada is making the point just for the understanding of, of the newcomer in spiritual life 
that the absolute truth has a form and that we as individual spirit souls we also have a spiritual form and we have to engage in transcendental loving service bhakti so bhagavan is there the supreme lord the bhakta is there the devotee and bhakti devotional service so by being constantly engaged in devotional activities one can transcend the three modes of material nature <coughs> sattva gun raja gun and tama gun the mode of goodness is there mode of passion and mode of ignorance especially the mode of ignorance and mode of passion have to be given up ignorance means darkness and being lazy not clean uh, and passion of course means to be always uh, looking to be engaged in activities for sense gratification for personal sense gratification but these tendencies have to be given up and one has to try to be situated in the mode of goodness goodness means the light knowledge <clears throat> so one has to acquire spiritual knowledge one must be uh, controlling one must try to control the mind and the senses of course uh, it is not easy to tra tra transcend the three modes of material nature and on our own actually we cannot but by engaging in devotional service by the mercy of the spirit master by the mercy of the lord we can transcend the three modes of material nature and then we can advance towards the highest goal pure devotional service uh, slowly but surely uh, of course uh, many times uh, it is explained that uh, at once one transcends the three modes of material nature but usually it will take some time so one comes to know about devotional service one is engaging in devotional activities then the consciousness becomes purified <clears throat> but in the beginning sometimes one may be transcendently situated and then again one is under the modes of material nature again one will trying one will try to be properly situated so in the beginning there is some struggle there but one has to be very strong in in one's determination enthusiastic and patient and always engage in devotional activities start doing it hearing shavanam about the lord and then kirtanam glorifying the lord then trying to remember smaranam and then worshiping the deities worshiping the lotus feet of the lord offering prayers always in the consciousness that i am the eternal servant of krishna sambandhagyan we should be aware of our relationship with the lord transcendental relationship we have nothing to do with this material body ultimately and material world we belong to Krishna. <clears throat> so with this knowledge, Sambandhagyan, <clears throat> we should engage in devotional service, we should chant the holy names. And then we have to pray. Praying is very important in conditioned life. We have to beg for the mercy of the Lord, of the Vaishnavas, of the Spiritual Master, in order to be able to transcend the three modes of material nature and to remain transcendently situated without fail <coughs> so in the association satovrite of the sadhu sadhu sangha so in the association of the sadhus it will be more easy to make advancement in spiritual life to be properly situated <coughs> therefore Srila Prabhupada created this ISKCON society so we can come together and practice together 
serving the Lord. Because alone it is very difficult. Because the external energy is very strong. And individually, the jiva in the beginning is not very strong. So therefore we have to associate with the devotees, especially those who are more advanced, those who are engaged in, in devotional service, those who are in the fire of devotional service. <coughs> and in that association it becomes easier to remain transcendentally situated. In the association of the sadhus we get the strength, we get the inspiration. to be engaged in devotional service. <coughs> and then it is only a question of time till we get uh, to the highest stage of pure devotional service. Anyabilashita sunyam jnana karma navritam anukulina krishna nusilanam bhakti ruttamam So we have to engage in Anukul Bhav, Anukul in a Krishna Nushiranam, in favorable devotional service, in proper consciousness, do what Krishna wants, do what the spiritual master wants. Without any separate desire that I want to do in this way or that way. But we have to learn to understand what Krishna wants us to do, what the spiritual master wants us to do and engage in devotional service without ulterior motives, without expecting anything in return. And yabilashita sunyam, jnana karma navritam. We serve Krishna for Krishna's pleasure, Krishnendriya priti, not admendriya tripti, for the pleasure of Krishna's senses, not for our senses. As Srila Prabhupada's spiritual master also used to say that uh, we don't go to the temple even just to see Krishna. Oh, I want to see Krishna, then my senses will be satisfied. No. We go to the temple to try to serve Krishna so that Krishna can see us. How is our disposition? How is our consciousness? We go to the temple to serve Krishna. Then Krishna will see us. All oh, this devotee is very eager to serve me. Then he will recognize us. <coughs> so we should be there in Seva Bhav, Seva Vritti. In the mood of serving. But even directly serving the, the Lord, that is not possible. First we have to approach the servant of the Lord. Das, das, anudas, the servant of the servant of the servant of the Lord. Hari Guru Vaishnav. We serve the spiritual master, the Vaishnavas. And by their mercy then we can serve the Lord. Even in deity worship, we worship the deities. But the devotee who is going on the altar to serve the Lord, before he's serving the Lord he will always take the blessings of the spiritual master, Guru Pankti, he will offer obeisances, he will offer flower petals to the lotus feet of the spiritual master. Then he will serve, he will do attic, offer the incense, but first he will show the incense, taking the permission of the spiritual master to offer the incense to the Lord. Then the ghee lamp, showing to the spiritual master, taking the blessing, and then he will offer the ghee lamp, each article. And while doing the puja after the Mangalatik, Sringar Seva and Abhishek, the, uh, the bathing and dressing of the deities, first there is Guru Puja. First we worship the spiritual master. And then we get his blessings. And then we can understand that the spiritual master is there in Gauri Lila and Krishna Lila. And we are there to assist. Then we worship the Lord with this mood, I'm assisting my spiritual master, he's actually there. And I'm getting the opportunity to, to engage in the service of the Lord. It is like apprenticeship. We're learning how to serve the Lord. Under direction, under the guidance, with the blessings of the spiritual master. 
<coughs> so first you have to become the servant of the spiritual master and the Vaishnavas and then we can become a qualified servant of the Lord and engage in the transcendental loving service. <coughs> in the beginning always in this mood that I am the servant of Krishna. But later on in purified consciousness then one's inclination will be re revealed according to the transcendental melodies which are there in Golok as a servant, as a friend or having parental affection or conjugal relationship with Krishna and then one will serve according to that capacity Seva Sadaka Rupina Siddha Rupina Chatri Tad Bhavilip Subhanya Karyav Rajalokana Sarataha so therefore our ultimately our service is twofold one is a sadaka serving I'm the servant of my spiritual master I'm serving the previous acharya Surubha Goswami I'm serving the Lord with the present body which we have and then in purified consciousness we understand we are spirit soul <coughs> and then we pray that we may understand what is our inclination what is our ultimate relationship with Krishna then by praying then some revelation will be there ultimately and then uh, following in the footsteps of the eternal associates seeing how in which mood they were serving Krishna like Mother Yashoda Prabhupada is writing in Bhagavatam in this chapter of Damada Lila the devotees who want to who are aspiring to enter into that relationship of Vatsalya Bhav, they should carefully observe the mood of Maria Shoda, how she is trying to serve a transcendental child, how she is taking care of Krishna. So that has to be studied and done. <coughs> Similarly, those in friendship, they will see the friends of Krishna, Sudam, Sridam, Madhu Mangala and so on. And by meditating on them, praying to them, <coughs> and then uh, that will be revealed also. Similarly, in the conjugal relationship. So that is the advanced stage of devotional service and uh, to be ultimately achieved. Uh, so in order to be able to... Um, fully realize one's uh, relationship and then enter into the pastimes of the Lord. So it is a gradual process. So first of all we have to be, as explained in this verse, one has to <coughs> be transcendentally situated, first understanding I'm not this body, I'm spirit soul, and the Lord is transcendental, devotional service is transcendental. So by doing this, uh, gradually we can uh, so, slowly but surely we can progress in our spiritual life and then ultimately we come to the highest stage of, of pure devotional service uh, culminating in Bhav Bhakti uh, where we serve the Lord with transcendental emotions coming from the soul proper nothing to do with this material body, with this material consciousness so it is a gradual process and we have to try to see that we are properly situated and that we can and that we can slowly but surely uh, advance in, uh, in devotional service <coughs> so uh, Prabhupada is writing also the Dajuna was asking what is the means of attaining to the transcendental position? So that is by engaging in devotional service. <coughs> so clearly Prabhupada here is stressing on this point of trying to make everyone understand that uh, the Supreme Lord is there in this personal form and we uh, spiritual beings with a personal form also and that only by bhakti yoga by engaging in devotional service one can attain to the uh, to the perfectional stage 
the Brahman platform and then be strongly situated there. So, any questions? Yes. Yes. When they are offering the incense and ghee lamps, they have to chant certain mantras or just whatever is going on in Mangala, they have to recite? No, the Pujaris usually they are, uh, they are saying some mantras also. For example, uh, same thing again because <coughs> We have to try to be transcendently situated and that is a constant endeavor and so therefore mantras are giving also to help us to be transcendently situated. So for example when you have the incense, so we say the name of the incense also in, in Sanskrit, Eshudupa and then we say Klim Krishnaya Maha or also Samarpayami, we may offer, we say, I'm offering you this. So we're saying this, uh, so that is one point. So we say of it, the, the name of each article, and then we actually, every time we offer something, we say, Klim Krishnaya Maha, or Klim Goraya Maha. And even if, for example, for the incense, there's one mantra, Vanashpadi Rasopano Gandayate Gandutnam Agriya Savadesham Dupayam Pradigri Yatam. Uh, so for each article there may be one mantra also which one may learn and which may be offered for the pleasure of the Lord and then he will accept it so each time we offer something you say Klim Krishnaya Namaha because actually the surrender has to be every moment of course the, puj the devotees are there doing kirtan and chanting the Maha mantra then one also becomes transcendently situated by the mercy of the Lord, especially by doing together, kirtan, by chanting together. At the same time, the mind uh, is, and the senses are very flickering. So therefore, at the same time, we have to try to control the mind and the senses. So, and especially on the altar, but even those who are there taking darshan, as we know, sometimes there's a distraction there. <coughs> when we see what the other person is doing, like that and uh, so but one has to be focused on the on the on the lord especially the pujari who is doing the same of offering the arctic but sometimes you see also even the pujari sometimes they're looking who is there and who is who is there in the mangal arctic who is watching me doing the arctic maybe there also but now we should be focused on the lord and that uh, the, the mind and the consciousness has to be uh, focused on the lotus feet of the lord and then we're offering the articles. And so that is a help, saying the, the different upachar, the name of the article, and then each time saying, Klim Krishna Inamaha. And then for Radharani, Simram Radhika Inamaha, for Lalita Vishaka, always then we say this mantra also. And this way, <coughs> the connection, the exchange is there with the deity. Yes. Using Mandala, performing Parikrama is writing, or we should just observe in such. Ah, while doing Mangala Atik, so Pujari is doing there. Is he's there doing the full Atik? <coughs> so he has to be there doing the full Atik, right? <laughs> the Pujari, and those usually those who are there in the Mangala Atik. So they will stay for the whole Mangal Arctic. And then they get the same benefit as the Pujari, who is doing the Arctic. However, sometimes, I mean, for example, some of the Pujaris, they have to prepare for doing the Puja. So they have to, they go to Mangal Arctic, stay there for five minutes, then they go in the kitchen and they prepare the Puja plate, cutting the fruits for Boga. So they have to go in the kitchen. They cannot stay for the whole Mangal Arctic. Maybe somebody has some other seva, or somebody maybe wants to go somewhere uh, for parikrama. So he may also sometimes leave in the middle, 
and then out of respect he may do parikrama also. There is not a big issue. It's not a big problem. No need to worry. But preferably, and if you don't have anything else to do, it is just obvious that you stay during the whole Mangalatik. But if you have some other business, you may do some, you may just take darshan and then you may circumambulate and then you may go also. There is uh, not a big issue. So important, <coughs> what is important? Our other things are darshan. Uh, what is important is the proper consciousness. What is important is the love. You must see that you have love for Krishna. That is important. And then you will be guided by Krishna also. What to do and what not to do. These external things are, are secondary. Rules and regulations are there to help us to develop our love. But more important is the love. Not the external, but then from inside the heart you must have. Uh, so, and the love has to come from the heart. We should do the devotional service from the heart. Because actually we are situated in this body, in the region of the heart. The soul is there, transcendental to the body. The, the jiva is situated. We say we are, the, the Lord is situated in the heart. And we are situated in the heart. But actually, we are not in the heart. No, no, not possible. Because if you open the heart, you do heart surgery, there's only blood and some vessels are there. You will not find the super soul or the individual soul. But it is just a saying, the Lord in the heart, because in the region of the heart, the soul is situated, floating within the, the five airs are there. Prana Vayu, Apana Vayu, Dana Vayu, Samana da Vayu, five airs are there. One going up and down, one is stable, one is helping digestion, one is helping us to evacuate, and sometimes belching is there. Uh, so, so the five airs are there and the, the jiva is floating in that, actually. And then, of course, it is still also transcendental. But uh, with the vehicle of the body, and then also with the help of, of the, the, the airs which are there, so the soul is situated there, and then even the super soul is there in the region of the heart. So that is the understanding. And uh, so, <coughs> so we have to come to this uh, proper understanding of uh, our existence and the existence of, of the Lord in the heart and then of course also as in regards to, to deity worship and then uh, uh, so the Lord is manifested in the heart but then is there in the Archa Vigraha also but we have to understand the, 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 the spiritual nature uh, of the Lord and that is uh, the elements are there for example of the deity so we may because otherwise we cannot see the Lord we cannot see the Lord in the heart we cannot see the Lord anywhere but by seeing the Lord in the temple that will help us to understand and then later on to realize the Lord is in our heart to realize the Lord is everywhere <laughs> so therefore it is important to go every day to the temple to take darshan of the Lord as long as possible <coughs> But if one who is carrying in the Lord in the heart, he may be in the temple or he may not be in the temple, but he's seeing Krishna everywhere and always. Premanjana Charita Bhakti Vilochanena Santasa Deva Hiri Yeshu Viloki Yanti Yam Shama Sundara Machinti Gunasarupam Govinda Mari Purusham Tamaham Bajami. He's seeing Krishna everywhere and all the time. So such a devotee may just go to the temple for two minutes and then he may do parikrama and he may go somewhere else and he's carrying Krishna always in the heart whereas somebody may be there in the in Mangal Arctic and staying there for half an hour but his love is not yet developed so he cannot even see Krishna there although he's taking darshan but he cannot see Krishna as he is because his consciousness is not pure so we have to understand that most important is the proper consciousness most important that we have to develop our love for Krishna. But these rules and regulations are helpful. 
so that we may develop our love. So therefore we follow Vaidhi Bhakti, the rules and regulations, but ultimately we have to become <coughs> transcendently situated and uh, still following rules and regulations, but we have to go beyond the rules and regulations and develop our love, love towards Krishna. That is more important than the rules and regulations. And then it, the love should be spontaneous, coming from, from the heart. So that is the spontaneous platform. And then actually then there's a real exchange with Krishna. <clears throat> so we have to strive to come to that platform. Although it may take time, so therefore it's recommended to follow as much as possible the rules and regulations and our soul. But we have to see the time, place and circumstances. And rather than seeing, we, we uh, rather than trying to judge others, uh, we should just take care of our own business. And we should try to do what we feel is best for us and you don't worry about the others. You may be staying during the whole Mangalatik and now don't try to see why this devotee is leaving early and he's doing Parikrama. You should be staying there during the whole Mangalati. You don't worry about others. You take care of yourself. But as of course, as a leader, sometimes you have to make sure that everyone is following as much as possible. Uh, the, the program being, being given by Prabhupada. But then, as I say again, when I, have to, when I have to see if one has some other seva, important seva, then he may leave and then he may do Parikrama and then he may do some other seva. That we may not do. Or maybe, yeah, he may have to go somewhere or maybe he's not feeling well, we don't know. And uh, so we should not worry too much about others, but we try to do what we feel is best for us. Thank you very Hare Krishna. Yes. Prabhu, now see how it's here Unfailing in all circumstances. Yes. <laughs> it's not possible. Uh, no, no, for you it's not possible at this stage. <laughs> Unfailing in all circumstances, it is possible. The pure devotee is always transcendently situated. But because you're not yet pure, you're uh, going up and down, up and down, up and down, sometimes going a little up, more up and then going more down. <clears throat> so because for you it is not possible, that's why you think it is not possible for anyone. No, but it's not like this. But it is very rare to find somebody who is completely transcendently situated. It is rare. But they are there. Always. Pure devotee is always there. We may not recognize. But they are there. <clears throat> so they are always transcendently situated. They will never come under modes of material nature, the pure devotees. They are always beyond the modes of material nature. Sargunan Samiti time. <clears throat> but that is rare, very rare. But we try, and eventually we'll become successful, but it takes time. But by constant endeavor and by special mercy, we can become free. And we can remain always transcendental. But it takes time, many years of practice, that you can come to the transcendental plane and you never fall down. I mean, from the point of view of consciousness, that you're always transcendental, not influenced by the lower modes. It is possible, but it takes time and it is not easily attained. It is rather difficult that we can see practically. Yes, yes. You were speaking something about the airs. Yes, the life airs within the body. I just was listening to a class by a uh, devotee in LA and he was talking about the life airs and that the air actually circulates clockwise but when the devotee or when someone is leaving their body the distress is caused by the fact that the air start going counterclockwise so I want you to 
So can you please tell me again, if you don't mind, about you will talk about the ears. Right, right, right. The ears. I want to write it down. Well, I mean, I never heard that the, 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 the air is moving clockwise. I never heard that. I mean, I never read it, I never heard it anywhere. No. But the, the air is, the five airs. One is pranavayu, the main air, the life air, the main air. And then there's the air going upwards. Therefore we're belching also and then the air is coming out. And we have to evacuate. And then the um, Panavayu, the, the, the air going down is helping us so that we can evacuate. Without the help of the air, we cannot even do that. So there's one air is going up, one air is going down. So one air is there also, of course, to, to help in the, in, the, in the digestion. Of course, the, the Agni is there, the fire. But even for the fire, sometimes we need some air. So the air is circulating. For example, when you're eating also, properly saying, half the belly you have to, you, you can eat half of the amount, uh, half of the belly. The belly should be half full with food, one quarter with water, and one quarter should be kept empty for the air. And then the, um, the fire of the digestion is there. And then, but the, some air has to be there also. If you are actually too full, you eat too much, then the, the air will not be able to circulate there properly and then you cannot even digest. So the different airs are there for different purpose, but uh, I never read and I never heard that it's going cl uh, clockwise. I never heard that. It doesn't make sense to me either. Yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes devotees say so many things, but, but we should see according to Guru Sadhu and Shastra. That's why I'm saying I never heard that before and I never read that also anywhere. I mean, I, I read Ayurvedic textbooks also and it's mentioned about the, the five airs and, and different places, but that it is going clockwise, I never heard that. But the air is moving and sometimes even when you feel pain. That is also with the, the air is moving different parts. And then that will also sometimes you have pain here or pain there. And mostly due to the air going this way. And then there's some kind of disturbance caused for some reason. Maybe there. <coughs> so... Okay, sometimes even, like if you, I find that sometimes even it takes energy when you honor prasad. Yes. You, you need energy, you feel that you, you Yeah, you need, need, yeah, while eating also it takes energy, especially when you get older. Yes. When you're young, and you know, it's no problem. But when you're old, you're eating and, uh, yeah, I also noticed that, I've noticed the last few years I eat is taking energy. Especially if you are fasting half a day festival and then uh, you are moving around and then you eat down to eat. You sit down to eat and then it's taking energy and then sometimes even the heart is beating. Tok, 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 like anything. Okay, you're eating and then you have to really slow down. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Especially when you get older. Then it takes energy, yes, yeah, it's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you're old, you have to slow down. Eating also, you cannot eat fast anymore, you cannot eat much anymore. And yeah, you get tired while eating also. <laughs> when you're young, no problem, you can eat, 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 and you have energy and no problem. But when you're old, is different story yeah everything is like a is a big task even getting up and then going to the bathroom and then we're already tired doing that <laughs> evacuating and then you're already tired then you take bath okay then you sit down and then when you're old you can after one hour you get tired of sitting 
you just cross leg then you have to sit on the chair because just sitting cross leg then you with straight and then you get tired when you're old when you're young no problem and then you walk to the temple even if it is only one kilometer you're exhausted when you're young you run and no problem but when you're old whatever you do is like you get exhausted also eating yeah <coughs>